Hello, beautiful souls. This is Jamie Goldstein, intuitive astrologer, and I'm so delighted to be here with you to share an intuitive flow on the energy of the week, including the Aquarius full moon, which is a super full moon and is on Thursday, August 11th. So this Aquarius full moon activates the Leo Aquarius access, and the Leo Aquarius access is the access of freedom, sovereignty, liberation, with Leo, this is freedom of heart expression. This is the liberation that comes from truly living in alignment with our hearts. And with Aquarius, this is freedom of thought. This is the liberation that comes from being a free thinker. This full moon is an opportunity to unplug some from the group think, the hive mind like programming, and really claim the sovereignty of our mind because this full moon is with. Saturn retrograde, the planet of authority, responsibility, and integrity. So we're really being called to take responsibility for our mind and what we're allowing into our mind, where we're giving our attention as well. Now with every full moon, the sun, the light of the sun is illuminating our unconscious realms being the moon, this mediator between the conscious and unconscious realms. The moon holds our stories from our past, from our history, from our conditioning. So with this full moon with Saturn, the planet of responsibility, we're re really being called to take responsibility for our old stories that are running our present day lives, right? This is an opportunity to really release these old stories that have been enslaving us to release where we have been allowing our past to essentially run our present moment experience. And so this is a really powerful uh, full moon. And this full moon is activating a fixed grand cross. So this full moon at 19 degrees of Leo will be squaring the lunar nodes at the time of the full moon, 17 degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. Uranus will also be at 18 degrees of Taurus as well. This is where Uranus is going to station direct or station retrograde later this month. Mars is in late Taurus as well. And Really, whenever uh, any planets are making a square to the lunar nodes, we're at a choice point between the past and the future. So how I, the real, like the biggest intuitive message that was coming to me with this full moon is this full moon is putting tension through the square on the lunar nodes. Essentially, this is wanting to give way to those old stories that have been keeping us stuck in our past, right? South node and Scorpio. This full moon is a really powerful break free, breakthrough opportunity to break free of these old stories that we've just been kind of unconsciously running on autopilot with our habits, our patterns, our dynamics, ways of being, where we've been kind of looping into our past, um, stuck in our unresolved trauma. I'm seeing this full moon, that, that tension from the, the square uh, with the full moon, creating that fixed grand cross to break free and to really be able to create some momentum to go towards and really align with this higher timeline that opened up with the Uranus North No conjunction. Because even though this full moon is making that square to the, the present lunar nodes will be at 17 degrees, south node 17 Scorpio and north node 17 Taurus at the time of the full moon. This is also activating that Uranus north node Mars conjunction that we had last week, July 31st and August 1st, where we had the Uranus, the great awakener, the evolutionary change agent, the planet of freedom, sovereignty, liberation, right? Just like those Aquarian themes I was just speaking to because Uranus is the... Uh, modern ruler of Aquarius. So this is very significant that this uh, Uranus is really aspecting this uh, full moon. So anyways, you know, last week, and I've, I've shared about this in many videos, we had Uranus, the great awakener and the planet that gives us access into the quantum realms, because Uranus is the first planet that's outside of the bounds, the boundaries of Saturn. Saturn is all about this physical world and physical form and the rules and the laws and the structures and all the things of our physical reality. Uranus, we can break free of that. We can go quantum and we access more 
metaphor of our multidimensional nature and the multidimensional nature of reality. So, you know, with that Uranus North Node conjunction, we had the Great Awakener meeting the evolutionary change agent meeting the evolutionary flow of energy forward. And then we had Mars, the activator, the ignition, kind of stepping on the gas to get that momentum going in a really personal way. And so with that Uranus North Node conjunction, as I've been talking about in many videos, that this is that, and we're still in it, one of the biggest timeline openings of the year to take a quantum leap forward towards the highest path that we are in resonance with. It's this big timeline opening, Uranus being timelines, the North Node being the future forward, and Taurus being fixed earth. This is about grounding the higher timelines down and in, grounding the new earth down and in, creating, building the new earth from the inside out here. And this even goes back even more. All the, everything in astrology is connected. All these transits are connected there. Nothing is happening in isolation here. So this even goes back to the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces that we had in April that really opened up the floodgates to connect to the higher stream of consciousness, to connect to the higher vision, the higher dream, the higher inspiration. So we were connecting into that higher dream. And now at the time of the Taurus solar eclipse, we had the North node that was kind of in sextile to that Jupiter Neptune uh, conjunction point at 23 degrees of Pisces. It's like whatever we were connecting in with that Jupiter Neptune conjunction, the energy started to flow in through the North node, really through that solar eclipse will ripple out for the next six months. We have all this new energy to ground in these higher timelines down and in within our bodies and, you know, within here, within this earthly realm. And so in order for that to happen, right, that's Uranus North node, we have this huge timeline opening and how I see it as a trajectory is being set. So the, when it's going to, we'll see the results and our physical reality here in a very tangible, concrete way. I don't know. Nobody can say because Uranus works in unexpected, unpredictable ways, and it always works differently than we're going to think it is. And so, but I certainly see the trajectory being set. We're, we're being led the signs, the symbols, the synchronicities, the ripples are happening here. This is a big time of accelerated change. So all through July and continuing through August, you may have had a lot um, falling out of your life. Just the way I saw it is anything that's not in alignment with our highest path forward. And Uranus is very much uh, cosmic frequency, the higher mind, cosmic intelligence. It's connected to our Kundalini energy. This is frequency, right? Anything that's not in alignment with our highest path forward is going to be falling away. And it could be unexpected, out of the blue, big, big shifts, big, big changes. And this is also at the same time, opening up space for new opportunities, new connections, new resources, new inspirations, new ideas, new innovations to come in out of the blue, unexpected, like a flash of lightning. You know, Uranus is that aha that comes like a flash of lightning. And so uh, old energy falling away, new energy coming in, lots of reorientation, lots of changes, lots of shifts. It can be very destabilizing as well. Anytime Uranus is involved, we can start to feel destabilized because Uranus breaks up stagnant energy. It creates that opening where, where we've been stuck and stagnant and resisting and gripping Uranus like a flash of lightning just breaks it apart and it can feel out of the blue, unexpected, chaotic, disruptive. It can also feel exhilarating, exciting, ecstatic. It just really depends on how we're relating in and connecting in with the energy. But Mars there is like stepping on that ignition, just like going for, going towards our highest path that we are in resonance with. And as I've been sharing, I don't think we need to be too action oriented about trying to force anything to happen. Of course, this is all about, right? Like the Venus Mars integration is when can action flow from being, right? When can action flow from our heart? Being first, Taurus, Venus rules Taurus. This is her home temple. This is about being, right? How can we be and then any action to flow through that effortlessly from that place of, from that place of being here. And so this full moon with Aquarius is squaring where 19 degrees, right? Aquarius, sun at 19 Leo, moon at 19 Taurus, or no, 
sun at, sun at 19 Aquarius. No. Oh my gosh. I'm getting so mixed up. My Pisces Mercury. This is a good reminder to breathe, right? Sun at 19 Leo uh, and the moon at 19 Aquarius squaring that 18 degrees, uh, that Uranus North Dome Mars conjunction. So now it's like, I'm seeing this as some tension, right? Something needs to give. It's like, we really need to take responsibility. That old story that we've been running on, right? That self-limiting belief that, um, you know, our self, any like self image or self identity, right? Uh, those old stories, those old voices in our head that are enslaving us, that are keeping us stuck in our past, our uh, old ways of being. It's like, this is really, it's like something's got to give. The scales have got to tip. We've got to have this breakthrough, break free. Saturn is just there saying, no more, no more running those old stories, no more. Um, uh, listening to those self-limiting beliefs, you know, when Saturn is coming up, Saturn is definitely going to confront us with our harshest inner critic, those voices within our head, the, you know, inner authoritarian, um, those kinds of voices, those are going to come up. Saturn is also going to confront us with our, our biggest fears as well. So there's a lot, I'm actually going to kind of run us through some of the energy, the activations that have been leading us into this full moon, because they're all very connected. We've had a lot of South node activation, South node, Pluto activation. Pluto is the modern ruler of the South node. So this is very significant here, but essentially this is a week where there may be a lot from, and already, I mean, starting at about last Friday, a lot may have been coming up from our shadow, our unconscious, wanting our loving attention, right? To feel it, to heal it, to take a look at what's been running on our unconscious realms, to really take responsibility for what's been there now that we're aware of it. And, 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 and this, there's this energy of purifying, of releasing, of letting go of these old stories here. So it's, really, really powerful. I'm just actually, I think this would be a good time just to start running us through some of these, the energy that has been kind of building up to this full moon that I think is really, really relevant here. So, um, Friday, really we, 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 Friday, we started to have this big kind of activation of our past because the South node is in Scorpio and the North node is in Taurus, right? The lunar nodes have been in Scorpio Taurus since January of this year. And we'll be here through mid next year. There are these, there, there are these evolutionary, big evolutionary forces that are always moving through the chart. South node is asking us to release, let go, whatever sign the South node is in, we're being called to release um, any shadow expressions of that sign collectively and personally. And this is Scorpio. This is a sign of the unconscious, right? This is a really powerful opportunity of, of alchemizing our unconscious to connect with more of our life force energy, to become more empowered, connect with more of our power. This is such a powerful energy of transformation. So the South and the nodes spend a year and a half retrograding backwards through the signs. So the South node has been in Scorpio. This is really South knows bringing up a lot collectively and, and personally from our unconscious, from the unconscious, right? So while the South knows in Scorpio, I mean, I think all the time, all the time is a good time to do the shadow work. Right. But particularly, um, particularly with the South Node of Scorpio, it is absolutely necessary to be doing the shadow work. I mean, we have an opportunity here to, if we work with this wisely and consciously to clear out not only things from our unconscious from this lifetime, but this is a major karmic clearing of many lifetimes. I mean, to just move forward free of some of those old karmic, uh, imprinting and stories and the unresolved things that maybe have been running, have been kind of there for previous lifetimes, many lifetimes. This is a major karmic clearing. So powerful. So the more you can kind of shine that light of awareness into your unconscious realms um, and allow what's there to take a look at it and, and, and to do that integration work. So, so powerful. And that is what connects us with more of our light more of our radiance, 
more of our brilliance, right? So it's really, I've had a few times even lately where I've noticed my unconscious coming up, the unconscious reaction to something. And I usually kind of feel shame at first sometimes, you know, just to be honest. And we have a lot of clearing out of shame as well. The shame programming, that's a lot of that's clearing out. But then I kind of can come back. I'm like, oh, isn't that exciting? I was like, I'm now aware of there's something still there. And my unconscious that, that I can, that I can, clear out, right? That I can choose to respond to life in a different way than just automatically running on those unconscious habits, patterns, dynamics, those kinds of things. So we have the South node there in Scorpio. Now the South node, I did a whole video on the meaning of the lunar nodes in Taurus Scorpio right now. Um, I'll put a link in the description here. If you just want to click on that, because I was in Oregon, I was sitting outside, really connecting in with nature, just kind of bringing in whatever I was just kind of channeling in the message there. So I'm going to put that video there, but the South Node in Scorpio is also really one of the biggest things South Node Scorpio and North Node in Taurus. This is about releasing complexity, re releasing, I don't know what I just said, releasing complexity and where we've been making things complex and convoluted and messy and murky, releasing that complexity and moving into more simplicity right? This is really what this nodal access is asking us to do. So South node in Scorpio, things can get really energetically messy because um, Scorpio is about shared, shared connection, right? Energetic connection, emotional connection, sexual connection. This is where we're really kind of merging with others. So, and there can be beautiful things about that, right? when it's done consciously, when it's done and when we're doing that in an empowered way, but this is a South note. So it's going to be really, it's going to be pointing out and bringing up these shadow expressions. So this is really South note Scorpio is wanting us to clear out where, clear out emotional and energetic entanglements, enmeshments, where things get getting messy because we're emotionally enmeshed with others or energetically entangled. Like things get really, really messy that way. So there's this big kind of clearing out of, um, yeah, just clearing things out where there's energetic messiness is essentially what that self node is wanting to do, where we poured it in with all sorts of people from our past that we just don't need to be energetically enmeshed with, energetically corded in with. Um, a big thing is also energetic. This is a big thing that's up like energetic and emotional boundaries. Like for me, I know when I feel someone trying to connect with me, sometimes even just like online. Right. And I feel when they, when I feel them trying to establish a connection, trying to energetically hook into my energy field, I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm just immediately like, no, no to that Venus and her Capricorn cycle is asking us to get really solid with our sacred. No, anytime we say a sacred, no, to anything externally that's not in alignment with us, we're saying a sacred yes to ourselves, right? And that's really powerful. So anyways, that's really, that is up. I just, that's a, been a big thing for me as um, I, I can feel it. If, I, if anybody's trying to energetically hook in, uh, push and pull at my energy, I'm just like, no, I'm just like, if somebody's not responsibly managing their energy, it is not my responsibility to work harder um, energetically to maintain my own energy and really hold the sovereignty of my own energy field if someone else isn't responsibly managing their energy. And even, you know, a lot of times it's unconscious so we can have compassion for that and love people and have compassion. But I am like getting super, like, it feels like a ninja, you know, with energy and discernment. These are all really big things that are up for this Scorpio South node because really clearing out the energetic messiness so we can be really intentional with who we are wanting to share energy with, who we are wanting to create with in that way, because, you know, this is very alchemical, right? When we're sharing energy in that way, we are creating something. So what are we wanting to create? This is so much energetic, just clearing up of energetic messiness. <laughs> it's like a big thing with that self node and Scorpio. And also, you know, Scorpio is very connected to the unseen realms, especially, you know, energy. We're picking up on energy. And I, 
you know, it's a super valid thing to be connected to and pick up on what's on the unseen realms. But this is where the Scorpio South is coming in. A lot of times, especially those of us that were really intuitive, we can pick up on something energetically, we can pick up on something that's unseen. But when our trauma is overlaid, you know, over our perception of reality, we can pick up on something, but then we make it more complex, more convoluted. We put the story of our trauma over what we're picking up on. We over, we over, yeah, we over, uh, we make things overly complicated. It gets convoluted. It gets messy. And then we start trying to like, you know, like Scorpio can really psychoanalyze and analyze it. And we start having all these stories, right? It gets super messy, super complicated, super convoluted. So what the South node and Scorpio and the North node and Taurus is wanting us to do, the North node and Taurus is saying, Hey, come back into our bodies, come into the right here, right now and simplify. Because when we're right here, right now, things get really simplified, right? When we're not all caught up in the story and the, you know, the like looping and all this trying to parse out what's what in the unseen realms. And, and I'm, I'm very connected to what's happening in the unseen realms. Like, but I do know, even though as intuitive as I am, sometimes my own, uh, you know, unresolved trauma or conditioning can put a story on what's happening. And then it can get really off from what's actually there. Right. So, and I think this is probably true for all of us, right? Um, this is about being really real with ourselves and taking responsibility for our story. So the South known as Scorpio thing, they're really complicated, really convoluted, right? When we're like trying to figure out why we feel these emotions and what's going on energetically and all these things. And then Taurus North knows thing, just simplify, become present right here, right now. I just felt like energy just slow down. Like I literally just felt this dropping in my body. I think I even kind of paused because I just felt that like, ah, kind of like clicked in, you know, right here, right now. So Taurus is what can I see? What can I smell? What can I taste? What can I touch? What can I feel? When we just come right into our bodies, things become really simplified and we can really trust our body wisdom, right? Because the Scorpio, we can start putting all the story and the, the psychoanalyst uh, or psychoanalysis and, you know, all of that. And then Taurus is just very simply, what do I feel when I'm in my body, right? Kind of clear, calm in my body. What do I feel? And that gives us our answer and we can make things super simplified, right? Like I'm just, um, because Taurus, the North node in Taurus is the activation of our body wisdom. And with Taurus, the North node and Uranus together right now, we have an activation of the wild genius of our body. The intelligence of our bodies are coming online like never before. The self-healing abilities of our bodies are coming online like never before. Our ability to access our multidimensional essence, our multidimensional nature in our bodies is coming on like never before. Like our ability to kind of draw in, like bring in all of our multidimensional selves, different aspects of ourselves and to kind of integrate them and merge them and bring them in into our bodies. It's like we're activated like never before. But what I was wanting to say is when we just really come into our bodies and trust our, and, and you can just feel what's happening, the, the messages that our bodies are communicating to us, things become super simple. And yes, our trauma can speak through our body as well, because our issues store in our tissues, um, our trauma does store in our body. This is why the North Node and Taurus, you know, South Node Scorpio is saying, do the shadow work. North Node and Taurus is also saying, do the somatic work, do the somatic healing, do the embodiment to help move that trauma out of the physical body as well. There'll be big rewards, big payoffs for doing that. But when we really just trust, when we can get calm and clear and within our bodies. So a lot of it is to listen to the, to really trust the wisdom of our bodies often does take a lot of self-regulation work to become really regulated within our bodies. Because if our nervous system is um, dysregulated, right? If we're kind of stuck in fight or flight, it's going to be really hard to parse out what's intuition versus what's fear talking to me, what's the trauma and my body talking to me. So that self-regulation work is so, so important. And with Uranus now being so activated, our nervous systems may be way out of range, but you know, Uranus's frequency 
And um, this, you know, we have Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign of frequency and this full moon, the moon is with Saturn. So frequency is really big uh, frequency energy. Now, when we just really, when we're kind of self-regulated and body, we would do that work, that embodiment, that somatic work to get really grounded in our bodies. When you essentially just, it's just about with Taurus. This is like, just trust the frequency, just trust what's being communicated through the body, trust the intelligence of the body. And when we just have it, you know, you feel it in your body, you have that you have that clear sentience, that moment, that, that tingle, right. That intuitive knowing you when you pick up on what your body is communicating to you and you just trust it, it makes things super simple, right? The South Node Scorpio is where we get all energetically messy and convoluted, right? How much I'm just like, for an example, for me personally, this has been a big thing I've been working on, especially working through people pleasing things. So I really don't like to make plans very far in advance of people because I just never know what am I going to energetically feel in the moment. I'm really energetically attuned to environments. And so you know, how many times have I overrode just my body wisdom that said, no, you don't need to go there or do this thing today, but out of people pleasing things, I did it anyways. And this is where it just things can get really complicated, really convoluted, right? Because the Scorpio South knows where we'll, we'll, you know, the people pleasing, where we're unmeshed, where we're energetically entangled with others. So just, just as an example, just go with me. I just, this might seem like really overly simplistic, not a big deal, but I actually think it's quite profound. Um, I, I, I think it's quite profound. I've had a lot of deep awareness about myself kind of really contemplating this, but, you know, just for example, let's say you have plans with a friend and you just have an intuition in your body, right? Your body says, no, don't need to go tonight. And then, you know, if, if we're stuck in like people pleasing things, right. Well, we don't want to, we don't want to let the other person down. We won't, we don't, we don't want them to be upset uh, with us. We don't want to be flaky. All these, right. All these, the, the mind starts kicking in and all the stories and the, and the fear. And this is like the energetic entanglement, right. The energetic enmeshment. I have to override myself to be, to make someone else happy. So, and, and ultimately while we may think it's about the other person, it's usually, self-oriented at its heart, because I don't want them. I don't want to be abandoned by that person. Right. I don't want to be rejected by that person. So we start the, you know, all the, we, 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 we start all that, the story that, and then we can get ourselves all worked up and then we can right? Then it's like, well, why do I feel, why do I feel like, why did I feel a no? Right. Is it unsafe? And then we can go into fear. Like, well, is it a physical thing? Is it an energetic thing? Like, what is it? And, and then things get all messy and convoluted. And it's like, it turned into a whole thing. And when it could have just been as simple as I had my body wisdom said no, and to just honor that. Right. And this is where this full moon with Saturn responsibility, taking responsibility for ourselves and allowing other people to take responsibility for themselves, right? This is going to be big. The moon with Pluto, where are we over taking responsibility for other people's emotions, right? Where are we wanting to control through not being in our authenticity controlling? So other people have a positive emotional response to us or a positive response to us or whatever um, that gets convoluted that gets messy whenever we're not in our authenticity we have an incoherent signal and things get messy things get convoluted so the, what I was trying to say with the south node in Scorpio the north node Taurus, so simple just listening to the wisdom of our bodies getting clear enough in our bodies where we can really attune to it and then listening to the wisdom of our bodies and then it's like super simple is it a yes or no just and I often do like I you know uh, connect with my body like a pendulum um, with that sway testing. Just it does it feel good to go to this or not? And you put your hand on your heart and really get into your body, get into your heart. And if there's a some gentle swing forward, it's a yes. If it's the back, it's a no. And it's like done, simple, right? <laughs> like, like how many times I, you know, and I love, I have such a deep reverence for tarot, but like how many times we get an intuition? Maybe we do that and we don't get the answer we want. So then we start pulling a tarot card and then we are like, well, let me pull another card and another card until like you finally get the, you know, the thing you want. So 
this is Taurus is about getting in our body, simplifying, trusting the wisdom of our body, really forming an intimacy. We have to form that intimacy first, right? And it does, it requires a lot of that trauma healing to get in that really deep intimacy with our body and trust in our body in that way. And also South node Scorpio, North node Taurus, this big reorientation of values, Taurus being the sign of values. Um, we have, and which is also maybe simplification of our values, all the things we thought we needed to be happy. Maybe we don't need, maybe all those, the things we've been, we we've been searching for happiness in the external world, maybe don't actually, you know, maybe don't actually offer true inner happiness. Taurus is a sign of pleasure, health, wealth, prosperity, abundance. And we're having a reorientation to connect on a deep inner level what does that truly mean for us, right? Just think about consumerism. We, uh, consumerism, you know, how many times, how many things can we buy, right? And uh, you can buy, 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 buy things. All these things you think are gonna give you that happiness and there's a short-term fix and then we're not happy long-term. So this is where we're really being asked to simplify, right? Come right, come into right relationship with our bodies, our local land, our communities, these are all big. I actually, if you're just interested, I did that whole video on the South node Scorpio, North node and, and Taurus here. So there's so much that's up for this full moon. Um, also frequency is very big, like I said, and this is big with Uranus of the North node in Taurus. This is really accessing, opening up our ability to access these higher frequencies within our body. And this is not to me about accessing external frequencies like you just hear so much in the spiritual community raise your vibration raise your vibration raise your vibration well to me it's not i don't think we can really force ourselves to raise our vibration i mean you can cover yourself with as many crystals as you want and uh you know cover your anoint your body cover your body in as many oils as you want and wave as much sage around as you want but if you're not really doing the inner work and the outer work and uh healing you know doing the healing work to clear uh to essentially clear the blockages from your shadow it's not going to do much and i have deep deep reverence and respect for um the the crystals and the oils and the plants all these beautiful healing, uh, beautiful healing, um, resources that the earth offers us and the, the plant beings and the mineral beings. And I just have so much love and reverence. And at the same time, we also have to do our inner and outer work. And, and I think they would actually uh, just, I think they would actually appreciate it. Right. So then we're not over consuming, um, the, crystals and the plants and the oils. Like for example, um, if you're buying like essential oils, uh, commercially, it, it, they're not, they're not all made sustainably and they, they, they use a lot of resources. And so it's like, if we're doing the inner and outer work, we can be more mindful, right. And more, maybe more sustainable how we're actually, um, connecting with and, and having more reverence and respect for how we're working with the minerals and the plants and the crystals and all these things. That was kind of a tangent. I can't remember how I got there. Oh, I was saying, because right. The, frequency. It's not about like raising our vibration higher and higher and higher and higher, like something externally. This is, I think more about clearing out what has been keeping us blocked from our true frequency. We all have this true frequency. It's like the frequency. We are all light beings. We are all born as light beings. So we are all have this very high vibration within us. That is the vibration of our higher self, our you know, our light being essence, our authentic essence. There's like so many ways that we're kind of getting at the same thing here. Our multidimensional essence, our infinite essence, right? Whatever, however you want to connect with that, that's always there and available to us. But when we start um, just through a lifetime, right? We start suppressing things into our unconscious. We take on qualities that aren't ours to fit in. Now we're, we're essentially vibrating at an incoherent signal. And so we're going to attract people, places, things into our life that are at an incoherent signal, right? We might start attracting friendships and relationships and romantic partnerships that are not in alignment with our true frequency. And of course, it's like, well, if we're acting from a place of, um, you know, trauma, right? If it's our, it, you know, a lot of times in relationships, right, we can act out our inner 
our inner child wounds, right? So it's, it's that as well, but it's all, it's actually all the same thing. And it actually all comes back to frequency. So what this full moon is doing, I see is there's so much energy this week of clearing up the old shadow. It wants to open us up to more of our authentic frequency within that we can access. So we can move through life and move towards that Taurus North node, you know, Uranus kind of conjunction more clearer in our frequency, which will align us uh, to our highest timeline, which, you know, cause it's all, it's all frequency and Aquarius is, it is that crystalline clear frequency. So this is really about getting clear in our frequency and it is the inner and outer work is so important. The inner work, being aware of what's blocking us, being aware of what's running the show and our unconscious. And then the outer work we need to, after we have the awareness, right? Awareness is everything. And we heal it to feel it. We let it process through all of that. And at some point we have to make a choice to do something different. Like this is Mars. And this is about the Mars square Saturn um, square that we've had this week as well. So part of one of the ways, and I th actually think sometimes this can be a really effective way to heal what's within the shadow, because essentially what's within our shadow is some self-limiting belief, right? And from that self-limiting belief, there is a habit, a pattern, a dynamic uh, a way of a way of thinking as well, you know, emotional things as well going on. They all come back to this self-limiting belief and they affect how we're interacting out in the world. And then we interact in ways we self-sabotage ourselves, right? And we interact in ways where from that self-limiting belief, and then because we're interacting with the world from that self-limiting belief, that gets projected back to us from our external reality because it is all frequency, you know, and then it perpetuates it. And then it we we get that um right? That, 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 that affirmation that the self-limiting belief is right. And it's not that it's right. It's just that we're operating from that place. And that's, what's being projected back to us. So one of the best I find for me, I have found some of the most success of, um, shifting some of my self-limiting beliefs, right. To shift out of those, um, self-limiting, you know, unconscious habits, patterns, dynamics, sabotaging habits, patterns, and dynamics is to one awareness is, almost everything, not everything, but awareness is almost everything, right? To become aware of it. And then I choose to do something that counters that self-limiting belief, right? So if that self-limiting belief says, um, don't go for that, don't, don't, uh, don't go for that job opportunity, right? You'll never get it. You're going to be rejected. All those things. I notice that's my self-limiting belief. And I make the conscious choice. I'm not going to let that self-limiting belief run the show of my life. And I counter it. I go for that job. I go for that opportunity. Right. And sometimes, you know, sometimes things may not work out. And if we just look from an evolutionary perspective, because then we might need to turn inward and do more inner work, but there's been so many times by me consciously choosing to go against, right. To, to work, to do something, to take an action, Mars counter my self-limiting belief that has, then I'm interacting with life in a different way. I'm interacting with life from a higher belief, right. And then life reflects that back to me. So that's been, it's been so powerful to get out of my comfort zone, to get, to really move out into my growth edge is just to notice what ways am I interacting with life, right? Like for example, perhaps in a relationship, where am I maybe being passive aggressive because I'm not getting my needs met and I don't want to just say that. So I act passive aggressively. And there's that habit pattern dynamic. And I may not realize, but I am self-sabotaging that relationship. So one is becoming aware of it. And then once we're aware of it, right, then I can choose next time. I want to, I, I notice, I feel that impulse to say something passive aggressive. I pause, I stop, I contemplate. What is my need? What do I actually want to say? What is my need that's not being met that I want met? And I just express it. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm needing, right? And then I let the other person through their own sovereignty decide how they want to respond without an attachment. But it's not easy work, right? And there's all sorts of inner child healing we can do, the, the dialoguing, connecting in with our inner child or any inner aspect of ourself, right? It could be our inner adolescent. It could be any aspect of ourself that that has a wound that's coming up. It, it could be our inner mother, right? I mean, there could be anything, any aspect of ourself can have a wound and we can act from that wounded place. And we can do that beautiful dialoguing to kind of check in, 
what's going on, what's the need that's not being met, maybe where did this wound come from, or where was the original wound, what can we offer to that aspect of ourself, all of these things are important. And I will say for me personally, one of the ways I've like kind of supercharged this is just to notice, notice where am I falling into? So one is awareness, where am I getting into that automatic habit pattern dynamic? First, it just takes awareness, right? And I'll, and at first, sometimes it's just is awareness, and we may not, we it, we may not be in a we may not be in a place where we, where we can actually take an action on it. And then I start noticing, I start feeling the impulse, right? When am I going to do that, right? That awareness comes in right before I do the thing, and then there's that space. That space is everything, right? There's that space, and then I can choose to act in a way that is not from the unconscious habit pattern dynamic. So. All of this to say, we are getting a big cosmic invitation really to take, take a lot of responsibility here for what is the way we're interacting with our, in the world. What is the life that we're creating? Because we're, we're creating the life that we are living. You know, um, we may not have had control or we didn't have control what happened to us when we were children. There are traumatic events that happen to us that are not our fault, that are not in our control. And we can honor that. We can honor the emotions. We can honor the grief. We can honor all of those things. And the empowering thing is to in the present moment, but what we do have control over is how do we let that trauma define us, right? How do we let it, do we let it run the show of our life? And, or do we, or what can we do to support our own healing, to move forward with more medicine to share with the world here. So this Saturn is saying, you know, this is really time to get responsible. And, and I know sometimes when, when like there's Saturn energy, I really feel kind of like, a um, it might sound like kind of tough love or that like kind of harshness, but, um, I don't know, this is coming through. So maybe someone wants news to hear it or multiple people, but like, for example, you know, if you're in a relationship and you just know you're not happy in that relationship, you're not fulfilled. Right. And you, all these things, all the things the other person's doing or not doing and why you're not happy or as why you're suffering as a result, right? Like this is where this full moon, cause Saturn is going to bring up all these things, right? Saturn's going to bring up, where are we, where do we, cause Saturn square Uranus, right? Where do we have fear and resistance to really breaking free into freedom, into more joy, pleasure, liberation, all these things. So Saturn's going to really bring these things up right now. So for example, if that's the case, I'm not happy in my relationship. Uh, it, it is, it, I'm not being fulfilled. All these things I'm, I'm putting a lot of blame, right? This is Saturn. It's about claiming our own inner authority. One thing to let us know if we're not claiming our inner authority is if we're putting all the blame on someone else, all the things a person is doing to us or not doing for us, all these things. And we're not happy as a result, or we're suffering as a result, right? This is, this is, this is the time where Saturn is going to say, well, why are you in the relationship? Right. And so the fears are going to, we're going to be confronted with them. It's usually a fear of like being alone, right? So there's usually some deeper fear uh, or some deeper self-limiting belief, a core wound around unworthiness or not being lovable and not being enough, which are not true. We are always lovable. We are always worthy. We are always enough, right? But there could be a core wound around that. And then there's usually the fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. But when we're staying with someone, when we're not happy, right? We're not fulfilled. We are abandoning ourselves. We are rejecting ourselves. So Saturn is going to bring all of this up. And this is an opportunity to really explore. Well, why? Like Saturn is just going to say, are you, Saturn is really asking us to take responsibility for all this relationships and situations we are in, in our lives. You know, where are all the excuses where we say, well, uh, I, you know, I can't, and it's the, we're blaming the circumstances on life and all of these things. Saturn is going to want us to take a, be really honest with ourselves and be really real. It's like to take a, uh, what is that? Good, hard look, or I don't know what that saying is. <laughs> Sometimes my Pisces Mercury, I mix all these things up, but Saturn is saying, let's get really real, really honest. Where are you displacing blame on others and not taking responsibility for yourself and the fear of that resistance, right? Of, of, of freeing ourselves, the fear, the thing we're attaching to that we feel like we can't live without. And that's, that's, what's keeping us in that, that unhappy situation, right? That unfulfilling situation that's actually keeping us in suffering. Saturn's going to want to take us a look at it. And this is a really powerful breakthrough, break free because Taurus is about pleasure, abundance, 
right? Fertility. This is about feeling really good, enjoying the earthly realm, enjoying our body. So enjoying the physical realm, feeling delight and pleasure. If we're not feeling those, we're, we're, we're not moving in the direction of the evolutionary flow of energy, right? So this is where if that's, you know, that, that should really be informing what feel right. Like the directions we're going in life, does it feel good in our body? Does it feel abundant? Does it, is it giving us pleasure? All these things, right. And we also, we need to do the Saturn work because sometimes we can make an excuse too about not doing the Saturn work to get to that place. We usually have to do some work to get to that place, but this is really, really powerful. Um, and I think something I wanted to say too earlier about frequency that I forgot is it's just getting out of the way of ourselves, right? So raising our frequency or having a more coherent frequency is what I would say, just being in the frequency of our heart essence, being the frequency of our higher self. It's never, we don't have this like external frequency we have to like attune with. It's really getting out of the way of ourselves, coming more down and in, and that will clear out our frequency. And then when we act in ways that are in alignment with our frequency, like when we act in ways that are in alignment with our heart, that are in alignment with our truth, we have a clear frequency. When we don't, we have a muffled or like it gets mucky and muffled or just incoherent. There doesn't need to be a judgment around it. It's really hard. And this is like the sun and Leo is asking us to really be in our individuality, to embrace our authentic essence, to be just unabashedly, be unapologetically ourselves. Um, what gives us joy? What lights us up? Like I'm a Leo rising and so much of the time people cannot meet my like enthusiasm and excitement for life. And people have a lot of, sometimes a lot of stories and judgment. Like, um, I have a Scorpio Pluto moon, so I've had some experiences in life and I've, I've gone through some really intense emotional experiences and, you know, big periods. I've, I've had a lot of intensity in my life, but what people see that my moon and Pluto are on my IC. So it, it's very hidden. It, I, I really, I need to have a lot of, uh, intimacy with someone to share these deeper things about myself and my life's journey. But I have a Leo rising, right? And so Leo, it's 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 Leo, it's joyful, it's enthusiastic, it's excited, it's lit up with life, it's fire. Fire animates, right? Fire is inspired. And so much of the time people cannot meet my Leo rising energy. You know, that's just how I go out into the world is a very Leo way. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong. People don't need to meet it actually. People are, you know, just need to be themselves, right? And so, and that's Leo, right? When we're high vibrational Leo, we are ourselves and our authenticity unapologetically. And we give space for everyone else to be that as well. There's enough space for everybody to shine and healthy Leo empowers everyone else or healthy Leo empowers others to be in their own individuality, to shine in their own light and their own unique way, because the world is a better place and we're all doing that. But what I was going to say is, Oftentimes people can't meet my enthusiasm. So over life, I really learned to turn it down. Um, I'm like, oh, it's too much or it's weird. Like I just, I'm only a rising. So that's going to be how we go out. You know, your rising is just how you're meeting the external world. So even just when I'm at like a store or something, when I see someone, even a stranger, when I greet them, um, whether I'm just checking out at the grocery store or whatever, it's just, I just welcome people like with excitement and warmth. And, and sometimes it's sometimes, you know, people like have that, like, it's like, oh my gosh, I, or my story is that they're judging me. Like they think I'm weird. They think I'm too much. And it's like, oh, you know, it's like, right. It's like the self, like the, the, the wounded part of myself was like, oh, I need to turn it down. Right. Cause this actually started to happen from a very young age. People want to kind of shut it down. And so then I learned to go in and be calmer, right. Or more monotone and don't, don't be so warm and open because people are going to think it's weird, but then I'm not being in my authenticity and I have an incoherent signal. So the Leo initiation is just be authentically you for me. It is when I, not every day it just depends on my mood. Right. But for the most part to be warm, and welcoming and embrace people and just like, and just like embrace them in my heart. And, and even if it's too much, that's okay. If it's not for someone and who knows, maybe even though I think they might, my story might be, oh, they think I'm weird. Um, then to, that that's actually not my responsibility to even focus on other stories. Cause I've also actually had people that I, I, that I actually thought didn't like me or thought I was weird that I felt like had a closed off energy to me have told me before. They're like, I, 
they're like, I, I love like how you embrace people and me like with such warmth and such openness. And I actually wish that I could do that too. So when we're empowered, Leo, we're actually just being ourselves and our presence is healing to others. It empowers others. Maybe someone may, maybe we think, oh my gosh, someone thinks I'm there. I think someone's judging me because I'm in my authenticity, but just for this Leo rising example, right? Maybe when I welcome someone with, or greet someone with warmth and openness and that like heart energy and that like, just that, that, you know, that, that, that big smile, whatever it is, well, maybe they were never embraced with warmth and openness and love and that way as a child. And so it's just unfamiliar to them. Right. But then myself, I want to put the story with it. And so this is just what I'm saying. We don't have to put the story right to just be ourselves and, and, and actually being ourselves is really healing for others because that interaction, even though it may feel like that person is closed off to me, maybe was actually incredibly healing. And I'm not saying this is in an egoic way that, Oh, I'm healing others. I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is with Leo, when we're just ourselves and our authenticity, it is healing. And we empower others to be in their authenticity, to be in their individuality, to shine in their own unique way. And kind of this, like my Leo season mantra has been um, kind of as I start my day, or even I was just, I was staring at the Zoom screen, kind of saying my mantra before I started filming this is, um, may every person that feel my presence feel the presence of love. And that's been my mantra. May every person that feel my presence feel the presence of love. Like that's been my kind of like Leo season mantra. And so I just, um, I, this is Leo season. This is where the central sun is at. It's asking us to shine in our uniqueness and our brightness and our individuality. And then in Aquarius, Aquarius, where the moon is at, this is about marching to the beat of your own drum. Leo and Aquarius are very much about authenticity. Aquarius is about breaking away from the status quo and doing things in your authentic, unique, individual way. It's about ascending the collective through breaking away from the status quo and having the innovation, right? Seeing things from new perspective, outside the box perspective. And with a, like the, you know, Aquarius is very much about the collective. Leo is about the individual, but they're very much connected. So when we are in our, when we cultivate our Leo, our individuality, our unique gifts, shining in our light authentically, we have more we can offer the collective. And also Aquarius I mean, one kind of the shadow Aquarius is like the group mind, the or the group think, the hive mind, everybody the same kind of energy. But to me, high vibrational Aquarius is it honors the individuality and, and understands every person has a place in the collective. And when we each embrace and honor our individuality, our gifts are given the space to thrive and flourish in our gifts, we make the collective better. So it's like bringing that Leo and each of us being in our beautiful Leo, authentic, unique, radiant essence, each of us that come to the collective that way, all together in our own unique way, we bring our gifts, right? We bring our gifts, we bring our own unique skills, and we build something amazing and magical in the world that wouldn't be if we were all kind of forced to kind of be the same here. So they both really honor individuality here. So just a few things I want to point out about the week. Oh, wait, that's not what I'm wanting to do. <laughs> I think I meant to get here a long time ago, but I just want to run through a few things. Oh my gosh. I actually think I did start on this. Then this was maybe like, who knows 30 minutes ago. So I'm coming back to this, but on Friday we had the first quarter square and it was at 13 Scorpio. So, but it was kind of like, it is a first quarter square, but there's a South node activation. So there's this big releasing and first quarter squares can be like, um, they're, uh, they're called a crisis in action, you know, by uh, Dane Rujar and, they can kind of whatever seed was planted at the new moon, we might have some confrontation, right? About, oh my gosh, is it going to work? Like, and there can be an edginess, right? An agitation, that kind of energy. And it activated the south node, what needs to be released. So then on Friday, we had the south node came to, or I'm sorry, the moon came to the south node at 18 degrees of Scorpio. Now, this was really. This was going to bring up what old story wants to be released. The moon comes to the south node every month. So this month, it happens to be at the first quarter square, which is really significant. 
because the sun is halfway between the North node and the South node. So we're kind of halfway between eclipse season. So this is also like a choice point energy. So the South, the moon with the South node may have brought up an old story, the old wound, right? I think this is probably bringing up and it's still carrying through through several transits, but bringing up an old story, an old wound, something stirred up from our emotional waters that's wanting our attention, that's wanting to be healed, that's wanting to be released. And then by Friday evening, the moon actually moved into a grand trine with Venus and Cancer and Neptune retrograde and Pisces. So grand water trines are this very healing aspect that all three water signs are activated. This was late degree water signs and grand trines open up our intuition, open up our psychic channels. They're a very creative energy to creatively channel our emotions. Uh, they might even expand our emotions as well, but that, that South note or the moon going to South note really stirred up something from our unconscious. Then I saw as the moon moved into that grand trine it's like this really powerful healing energy, Neptune retrograde, bringing in the higher spiritual perspective, maybe having a higher spiritual perspective on um, something with the, the, the wound, right? The story, the trauma that's coming up and Venus and cancer, just, there's this beautiful heart healing, nurturing energy. And what I saw was perhaps something was coming up, some healing energy and, uh, Neptune dissolves, right? And water dissolves. So it's like a dissolve that that wound came up with the moon with the south node and then dissolving the energy to allow this beautiful healing. And I saw this healing of where are we self-sabotaging ourselves? Where are we self-isolating within ourselves through this wound that's actually blocking the flow of connection and intimacy with others? So a lot of healing there to heal. Where are we self-isolating within ourselves? And so then on Sunday, we have the sun come to 15 degrees of Leo. So this is the cross quarter, right? And then Northern hemisphere, this is uh, Lunasa or Lamas. And this is the, you know, the celebration of the first harvest, these cross quarters and South Southern hemisphere, you know, Samhain, these uh, cross quarters are really powerful, energetic portals. So these solar por portals, just like the equinoxes and the solstices. So we had that really powerful cross quarter day. And we also had Mars square Saturn retrograde at 22 degrees. So this is interesting. Mars, the gas pedal planet, Saturn, the brakes. So it could feel like perhaps there was some roadblocks that were happening this weekend, maybe even coming into this week as well. Some roadblocks, some obstacles, some limitations. Um, what I'm really seeing, and there could be edginess, Saturn square Mars can be edgy. It's like, I want to take action, right? I want my way. And then Saturn's like, hold on. No, <laughs> you know, and so, but how I'm seeing that is that the bigger initiation here is Mars is how we take action. So Mars just came last week, you know, the North node in Uranus is big activation to take action, to go towards our highest vision, our, our highest path, you know, to align with a higher timeline. But now, because there's been this, like, there's almost this like upgrade energy with Mars. This is how we take action, right? How are we assertive? Our outward directed energy. I see Mars squaring Saturn retrograde is like, wait, now that we've had this upgrade, we have to reorient how we're taking action, right? We have to take action that is aligned from our higher self, right? That is aligned with spirit or divine will. Mars is right now, or with a uh, full moon, making a sextile to Neptune, right? This is action aligned with divine will being guided by the higher vision, uh, the signs, the synchronicities, these kinds of things. But essentially what I'm seeing is Saturn was like, wait, no, we have to reorient Saturn square Mars. We have to reorient how we're taking action. We need to be responsible for how we're taking action. Right. And there's still kind of this energy with the full moon, right? We need to be responsibility, how we're taking action. Are we taking action from our old stories or are we taking action from a clear place within, from a clear frequency within essentially? So um, maybe getting innovative, trying something from a new perspective, trying something a new way. Squares want us to integrate both signs, have a new perspective and take action in a new way. So that's something to contemplate. How are you taking action? Um, is it aligned with divine will? Is it aligned from a clearer place within? Or are you taking action from like an old story that's self-limiting? Also, we had a Venus square Aries at 24 degrees, Venus 24 Cancer, Aries 24 Aries that day as well. So that may have brought up some deep, deep things from within our um, uh, unconscious, particularly around the feminine. There could have been sacred rage that come that came up, anger, or it could be you know, typically it could with Aries and Aries, it could be rage or anger or, um, Aries really is, is 
Eris, Eris does not like injustice. That is what Eris is uh, really bringing to light is all, all these things that have been in, ha, there have been injustices around. So Venus and Cancer, there may be something um, around injustice around the, the feminine or oppression around the feminine, right? Um, uh, all, all these things, Cancer could be parent, uh, you, there could be, I mean, it could be anything. There may be things within our family that were activated, things within our relationships that were activated here. So there's a lot that, that could have brought up here. And so, um, where has the feminine been oppressed uh, that those kinds of things could have been coming up for us on Sunday as well. So on Monday, we had the sun trying Chiron at 16 degrees, which is bringing in a lot of healing energy, right? We had that new moon in Leo right before the Jupiter or right before the Uranus North node conjunction, the moon was trying Jupiter, the planet of expansion, abundance, really, uh, opening up, expanding and amplifying our creative energy. Leo is a sign of the creatrix, right? The, the creatrix, the king, the queen, this is our inner creatrix. Um, so we have this really powerful creative activation there with that Leo new moon. And now the Aquarius full moon, the moon will, or the sun will be trining Chiron now. This is really, this is a very healing energy. Um, I see a lot of opening up our healing gifts. Um, as well. This is, yeah, this is just supportive energy to be able to creatively tap into our healing gifts and share them. Um, I'm just kind of tuning in. Now, of course, Monday was also, that was the 8-8 Lionsgate portal. And there's a lot of uh, controversy around that, um, whether astrologers think it's there's a real astrological significance or not. Um, there's also a lot of controversy around it on whether is this like a pure kind of uh, is this a, is the, is the energy around this pure or has it been co-opted and infiltrated? There's a lot around it. And this is very much connected to the, um, the, uh, Saturn Aquarius and this Aquarius energy, right? We're with this full moon, we're really being asked to take responsibility for, um, for ourselves and claiming our own inner authority. So I love this actually that like, there's all this kind of big debate and, and, around it. And this is where we get to really actually uh, practice claiming our own authority and checking in with our own discernment. Mercury and Virgo is asking us to really, really sharpen our lens of discernment. And I loved, I watched Divine Harmony's masterclass on it the other day. She's amazing. She's such a gift to the astrology field. I, in the astrology community, I just love her so much. And I so value her teachings and her wisdom. And I loved her webinar. You know, she really spoke to she cleared up a lot of the confusion um, as far as like uh, the what's not astrologically or astronomically accurate that people say about it, what is, and it is the heliacal rise of Sirius um, at the, you know, latitude line of uh, Egypt. And there's the alignment with the uh, the pyramids there with the heliacal rise of Sirius. And um, I loved, I, I love Kaylin Costell. She did an amazing video on the, she calls it the eight, eight infinity gate. I love those. And so, and I love this. This is where there's just really an opportunity. We get to, uh, there's a lot of people that have other opinions on it. We get to just check in with our own discernment and what feels right for us to participate in and not participate in. And I'm just going to be really honest. You know, two years ago, I was really feeling the Lionsgate portal and, you know, it's this feeling the um, the opening of the portal to connect more with the cosmic energy, our galactic family, you know, connecting with our star helpers, the star guides, maybe our own multidimensional star seed or star essence, you know, our star selves as well. And I was really into it and I held the ceremony for it and it felt really empowering, really loving, really great. Uh, last year I got on kind of a whole rabbit hole thing about reading and studying into it and, um, kind of came to the conclusion last year that there was some energetic kind of infiltration that the, had been co-opted. It just didn't align with me to participate. So I didn't last year. And this is where, you know, we get to change our, we get to change our mind. We get to change our opinion on things. Um, this is where we're just, we're being given such high level discernment initiations in our world right now. And then this year, I actually feel differently than I did last year, really energetically tuning in this year. I, I didn't feel that energetic infiltration. I didn't feel that co-opting um, from how I was tuning into it. And 
you know, we live in a multidimensional reality. So all these things can actually exist simultaneously as well. And if you had another um, opinion or another intuition, on it, that's totally fine. That's not a problem. Um, but, you know, of course, anytime there's lots of light beings coming together with a really powerful, beautiful, loving, supportive intention, there's always going to be the interfering energy that's going to try to interfere and is going to try to co-opt it. And this year, I just, I didn't feel it. I was like, you know, if I'm sure I'm as it always is, we live in this duality, right? This polarity as the, as that polarizing energy is going to want to interfere. I was like, you know, I was like the light wins. I just, I didn't feel that co-opting of it. And so I had a different opinion this year. It felt like a really beautiful energy to connect in with my star guidance, the galactic energy, the cosmic energy. Now this is an intense energy. And I, you know, I, I was really, I had a lot from my unconscious coming up. I mean, actually midday kind of got in bed and cried yesterday about, um, I realized, you know, and this is where we may be having old kind of like stories or wounds that we thought we healed that aren't totally healed. We may have those been coming up. So, you know, if, if you didn't feel like, oh my gosh, if you weren't feeling like high vibe and blissful yesterday, nothing wrong. I actually wasn't feeling that yesterday um, as far as just my personal kind of experience in the moment, but that doesn't mean anything's wrong. And portals are any type of portal, astrological portals, they are initiations, right? So oftentimes it's not about just uh, blissfully walking through them, you know, it's about usually there's an initiation to get through them. So um, that can be really significant as well. And the energy that cosmic energy is just intense and it's wild, but all that to go back to say, I actually felt a beautiful energy with the, the, the lion's gate portal, even though personally I had a lot coming up from my unconscious, which I really felt was beautiful. And so in alignment to purify, to purify, to purify, certainly regardless of the eight, eight thing, we're in a major portal of transformation. I'm mean, the biggest thing is the Uranus North node that by far to me, that is the biggest thing catalyzing us through a portal into higher timelines right now. But what I'm wanting to say is the biggest thing is discernment, 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 Virg Mercury's in Virgo, asking us to cultivate our discernment, right? Virgo earth, trusting the discernment of our body. We have all this Taurus energy to think, come into the discernment of our body. Saturn Aquarius saying, claim your own authority, right? So this is claiming our own authority and taking responsibility for, um, taking responsibility, not just handing the responsibility over to anyone, authority figures, uh, those that have been, uh, had authority, you know, uh, from societal or structural levels, not even handing authority over to spiritual teachers, right? Coming into your own discernment, your own alignment. Now I didn't lead anything yesterday that didn't feel an alignment for me, but I will say I feel differently than I did last year. And it's okay to change our mind, right? It's, um, it can be our ego that says, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to attack to what I said once, because I want to be right. You know, like we, things change. We actually live in a multidimensional reality that's constantly changing and we can all, we're all kind of going in and out of all these different realities and dimensions and things actually opposing realities can occur simultaneously, you know, within our own reality, but also within, we're all kind of going in and out of all these dimensions and the energy is intense. It can feel really hard to stay grounded. I'm having a hard time staying grounded. I feel such intense. I mean, really since that Uranus North node conjunction is so much intense energy coming through my body that can want to kind of go up and out, but I'm really bringing a lot of tension to stay down and in, let this energy move through grounding, getting my feet on the earth, my hands on the earth, letting it move through because we are just in such this, we're in such a time of, of rapid change. Now, this is another thing about this full moon is, um, yeah, this is really about being our own authority here. So Saturn's retrograde, claiming our inner authority. So where have we been outsourcing our authority on external structures, authority figures, these kinds of things? Of course, we've seen the last few years that a lot of these uh, places as a society and a collective, we've outsourced our authority to, they don't have our best interest, right? So this is about coming together, claiming our own inner authority, and then Taurus North Node gathering in our like-minded communities to um, to share our resources together, to create something together where we're not so reliant on some of these external authority structures. But this also goes for not placing your authority in, in any one spiritual teacher or anything anyone else says, 
always run things through the filter of your discernment. Mercury and Taurus is saying, run things through the filter of your discernment. We're being asked to sharpen our discernment, 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 discernment with Mercury and uh, Virgo here. So this brings me to today, Venus opposed Pluto earlier today at 26 degrees. Again, it's just a lot of shadow work. It's probably, I think it's all related but there could be something from our unconscious around our relationship to our feminine. Um, Venus is in the last part of her morning star journey, right? Um, there could be something around relationships, something from our unconscious that's self-sabotaging our relationships. This is cancer. So this is going to be things around what is self-sabotaging true trust and intimacy connection, uh, nourishment, these kinds of things, where are we actually sabotaging from one, creating that within ourselves, but also being able to create that within others. So lots of things from the shadow to really take a look at here. Um, and then Wednesday, we have the moon will conjunct Pluto at 26 Capricorn. So again, just another big shadow work kind of invitation. It could really intensify our emotions. So there may be more emotions coming up on Wednesday, moon opposite Venus. So again, this is where we have an opportunity to break free of some of the old stories, right? To come more into our heart, to come more into our authentic feminine essence, to free ourselves from where have we given away our power? Where have we given away our power through letting our the past, right? Our old stories run our present lives. This is a really powerful breakthrough, break free energy of coming more into our heart. Um, August 11th, Venus ingresses Leo. So this will be nice. So the Leo full moon, Venus is gonna ingress Leo and she's coming out of the, the deep emotional waters of cancer and she's gonna warm up in leo like she's ready to dry off and even though she's about to go it's i mean this is like kind of the you know this is i think she's gonna she's gonna go in the underworld mid um mid-september and i do believe she'll be in virgo I, I need to go back and check my pisces mercury mind just mixes all these things up but it's like we're in the like this is the final surrender, the final release of releasing everything that is not true to us. And as Venus is in Leo, it's like I want to shine in my truth. I want to radiate from my heart. I want to be in my authentic essence. And so this is an a, you know a really powerful energy to create from our heart. There's this creatrix heart energy kind of activation. And also this is about really um Again, just more shedding, more releasing anything that's not authentic and true to us. And Venus is going to want to kind of have some fun before going into the underworld, I feel like. So it could, you know, it could, um, it could bring a little more joyfulness to the energy, more playfulness to the energy. And then the moon will square the lunar nodes on August 11th at 6.06 p.m. These are central time. This is central timing. Um, you can convert as needed. So that's, again, this is kind of leading into the full moon. There's some crossroads between past and future, old stories coming up. Are we going to listen to our old stories? Are we going to act from them? Or are we going to go towards the new stories and then create better stories for ourselves? Take responsibility of the stories we're running. And then... Um, let's see, we have the moon squares Uranus at 7 47 PM. So again, this is just kind of an activation of the, um, that Uranus North node conjunction. And we have the, you know, the Saturn Uranus conjunction will be, or not conjunction Saturn Uranus square. This is really powerful breakthrough, break free energy. It's going to continue through the rest of the year. And then we have the Aquarius full moon at 19 degrees, 21 arc minutes at 8 35 PM central. I've shared so much about that Leo new moon already, not Leo new moon, Aquarius full moon. And then on August 12th, we will have the moon conjunct Saturn at 1258 AM. And so then this is like, okay, we had that Leo or the Aquarius full moon. And that's where Saturn's saying, okay, let's really be responsible with, we, you know, this is about uh, being responsible of our emotions. Feeling emotions is beautiful, right? It is healing. It is natural. But how do we react, re react. I was going to say react. How do we respond versus react from our emotions? Right. And this is where Saturn is really saying, let's take responsibility for our old stories here. Um, yeah, these are, there's just so much happening. So just to kind of recap here, the, you know, the biggest themes for the week are to do the shadow work, to become more clearer within our perception, to really be able to bring more light into our bodies to um 
have a more coherent frequency within. And this is about really like claiming the claiming more liberation and freedom through living from our heart, being a free thinker, right? Being a free le electron, just showing up in our authenticity and embracing more of our authenticity. And um, this is just this is such a powerful breakthrough, break free kind of week that I'm feeling, but it really will require taking a look at what's happening within the unconscious realms, embracing, loving ourselves, right? We are always whole. Well, I've talked a lot about the wounding, the shadow, the trauma, all those things. And at the same time, we are always whole. We are always, you know, we are always in a state of wholeness. Our essence can never be touched by any of our wounds, our trauma. Our essence is always pure, always whole. And we, this is about kind of getting clearing out any perceptions and realigning with that as well this is about getting out of the way of ourselves and embracing more of our authentic essence so i think that was a lot um as always well actually one more thing i want to say wherever your fixed signs are the houses where your fixed signs are in the astrology chart for me it's my angles one four seven ten you may have big things going on in your life and all four of those houses I mean, for me, I do first house, fourth house where I'm living, seventh house relationship, 10th house career. So you want to look at for, like, for me, I actually have big activations in all four of those. So wherever your four fixed houses are, you're having big, big activations. So something could actually, the shifting, the changing could be actually activated in any four of those, of those houses as well. So I love you so much. Um, as always, I love to sit in one-on-one -on -one sessions and hold sacred space and astrology readings where we can get really personal into your chart, because this is a general reading, right? And, um, with an astrology reading, we can see more specifically, how are you being activated? And we can get timing down more specifically on astrological activations, uh, supporting you through moving through these wild, wild times of transformation. And so you can find a link there and the comments. I love you so much. I'm wishing you all so many blessings and joy and, 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 and delight and just so much love through this time. I love you so much.